everybody. I'm Lee Ann Miller with W. Cushing & Company. And in cooperation with Rug Cooking Magazine, we'd like to thank them for this opportunity. Today you're in the dye kitchen with me. We are going to go over something called dry dyeing, or we call it here, sprinkle wool. And <coughs> sprinkle wool should be a great thing to do. Um, we have dry dyeing in this book, in our book, uh, Beautiful Wool in the Dye Kitchen with me. But it's done in the lasagna method. It's done in a layered method, and it's very, very complicated. Uh, some people asked if there was a different way to do it. They didn't want to have to cut their wool to fit their pan. So we are going to simplify the dry dyeing lasagna method, and we're going to call it sprinkle wool. Okay? Sprinkle wool. Sprinkle wool is a dry dye method. You are going to mix one eighth a teaspoon of dye, any dye you like, uh, more than one if you want to do multiple colors. I'm going to use maroon because I like maroon, and I'm going to mix it with a few other colors. And you're going to mix it with two teaspoons of non iodized salt. And that is your, you mix it thoroughly, and that is how we start our dye process. So to begin with, I am going to get two teaspoons, and I use an ice tray. This is a plastic ice tray. You may not use all the dye with one uh, when you dye the first time. You put, you put saran wrap over it, foil over it, put it away in a cool dry place to use again. So I am going to put one teaspoon, two teaspoons of non-iodized salt. And how do I know that this is salt? Because it says so right there on the jar. Next, I have my maroon dye, and I'm going to put in an eighth, one eighth of the maroon dye, just like that, right on top to begin with. Okay? And I'm going to push these off to the side. Normally, I would then clean my dye spoons with my kosher salt, but I'm going to move them off to the side for a moment. And I'm going to take, and you can use a toothpick, uh, you can use anything you like. I would not recommend using your dye spoon. I just would recommend using a toothpick, another spoon you may have, a plastic spoon, a fork. Make sure that they're mixed thoroughly. Uh, if they're not mixed thoroughly, the salt doesn't disperse evenly, then you get blotching on the sprinkles. And we just want sprinkles, not blotching. Now these have been stored. You just have to make sure that all of these, there's little lumps in there, you chop them up, make sure they're okay. So we are good to go. The next thing that we have to do is we have, I have a yard of white wool that I soaked and it's thoroughly soaked. We're gonna move this over here just so you remember what we did. And I am going to squeeze this. We don't want a lot of water in this process. The more water that you have in your wool, it will run. And we don't want it to run. This is the one time we don't want it to disperse evenly. So I have already wringed this out once, wrung it out once, and now I'm wringing it out again. And there we are, and then there we are. So even though I thought I had gotten a lot of the water out, I did not. There's still, there's a ton of water in the pot. Now I'm going over to my pan, okay? And in my pan, I have put foil, okay? The foil protects this. We are going to steam this wool. We are not going to cook the wool. So this prevents your wool from burning. We don't want burnt wool. It smells horrible. Then you set off the fire alarms and then the local fire department comes and makes fun of the local hooker who burnt her wool. Not that that ever happened here, <clears throat> but it can happen. So we are going to put our white wool in here. I did not cut it exactly to the pan. You don't have to. If you had multiple pieces, you could do multiple pieces. And I am just going to disperse the wool in an uneven fashion. 
This is not the little rosettes or rosebuds that you do for a spot dye. This just disperses the wool <coughs> evenly and lets you do the sprinkle wool. The main thing with this is you don't want your edges turned under. We are only going to dye the top side of this wool. We are not going to dye the bottom side of this wool. In the lasagna method, you have to dye both sides with the sprink with this method in order to get it to go down. So with this method, we are not going to do that. So now I am going to take a little bit. This is something that we're going to do. This is something that um, we do quite frequently with the sprinkles. You have to have, you can use a rounded one. I prefer one that looks like a shovel. We don't want to go overboard with the sprinkle. We want it to disperse nicely or you can do it in a pattern even. It is a way uh, to also test colors. A lot of times if you're not sure if you like a color or if you want to test a color, or if you want to make ugly wool pretty, this is a method to do it. I only know where the maroon is. These other colors, I'm not really sure what they are. We're going to find out. And these, um, these will cook for 35 minutes. So after I'm done showing you how to apply the dye to the wool and seal it up to steam, we will show the, the actual dyed piece of wool later, uh, later on Thursday or the next day on Friday so you can see how it looks. Now, can this be done on colored wool? Most definitely. Can it be done on textured wool? Most definitely. This is just a fun process. Have fun with it and enjoy it. So I'm gonna start with my maroon. And when I start with my maroon, I have a little bit in here and I start in. And if you notice, and be sure to wear your old clothes. I have an old, an old shirt on and an old pair of jeans. Mainly because you don't think, because it's the dry dye, that it's gonna go any place. Well, you can make a mess of this in about two seconds. So don't, uh, don't think that you can't. And as you can see, some of it got a little clumpy. I'm just gonna do that. Didn't mix it all that well, but that's okay. That's a good example, a good teaching moment. You can come in here and do that, and that will break it up. Remember, you're not flooding this pan with water at the end, so you have to make sure that you want the dye where you want the dye. It's not going to move around. I think I'm gonna pick this one. I don't know, it's a blue. It looks like a blue, it could be a purple. I'm gonna put this right in here. Gloria didn't label them. You know, we have you have to have some fun. Maybe you have packets of dye that you inherited. You don't know what the colors are. Uh, you, they're not, you know, they're just in envelopes or something. This is a great way. Oh, got a little heavy there. Now that was a little heavy. That's a little heavy. You'll see what happens with that at the end. And this is, it's just a fun thing to do. I think we're gonna put some of the yellow in, just like that. You could do this in circles, you could just do this randomly. It doesn't really matter. It's I'm doing it in the stripes so it's easier for you to see. And it's a lot, a lot of fun. Now, if this was the lasagna method, I would then have to flip this wool and do it on the other side and then lay my next layer on top. And a lot of you have asked, you know, for a simpler way you like the look, so this is the simpler way. Now I'm gonna overdo it a little bit just because we have the colors here and they look like fun. I'm gonna put some different down here like that. This is one case where you want some of the wool, the white wool, to show. You don't have to cover this entirely. You will get two-sided wool out of this. This will not be one-sided wool. And 
just for fun, let's see what's this. I think this is a little bit of gritty in there, but that one. Just up in here like that. Okay, so we have dispersed our dye. Put a little bit down here. And I'm gonna put a little bit more up there. That was a little heavy. You'll see where that, you, you get a sense for it, but if you use a rounded spoon, you tend to dump. The shovel spoon works. Um, you can get these in any uh, kitchen store. The same thing, don't buy good ice cube trays. Go to the dollar store and get a bunch of dollar ones, and this way you're not destroying it. I like the plastic. For this, don't use a plastic spoon, it tends to stick. And But the plastic for this keeps it nice, then you wrap it when you're done. And then you could also put little tags on which color is which. Okay, I'm done. For this entire tray, I am only going to put in one cup of water. So I'm not gonna pour it on top. That's the mistake people make. I'm gonna go around the corners just like that and if you pour right you end up correctly that's the only water that we're going to add now I have my foil here shiny side down shiny side is down you could put this in an oven at 350 to steam it for 45 minutes unfortunately this tray does not fit in our oven but if you do it in a tray you can that fits in your oven, you can then cook it for 45 minutes at 350. 45 minutes at 350. If you're doing this in your turkey roaster, you would put the foil over the turkey roaster, put the lid on, uh, put it up at, four, at 350 and do it for 25 minutes. So now all I am going to do is light it. It's a double burner because of the size and I am on a low flame. I am not on a high flame. If you have a gas stove you're doing it on a low flame. This will cook now for 30 minutes but I am going to check it at 20. I like to check it at 20. I'll check it at 20 minutes and then I'll do it 10 minutes more. So it is sealed. It's not sealed tightly. We want it to steam. One cup of water. What you get at the end, and this is our Christmas sprinkle with um, red, green, and gold. This is done in a sheet pan method. This is not a lasagna method. And you can see, now, when you get these heavier areas, when you get these heavier areas, you are definitely, I put too much in. You know, I got a little heavy handed with this one. You can tell when you get heavy handed, but <clears throat> it also adds to the look. Now, this is also two-sided wool because we did not flip it and do it on the other side. So you have a lighter version of it on this side to show you what that looks like. Move the die here so we don't get the dye all over. So here is the top side. Here is the underneath side. There is a two-sided. It is two-sided. And you can tell. It's great. This becomes the shadow for this. This makes great stained glass. This makes great stained glass windows. Uh, when we do it in the brighter colors, it makes a flower garden. If you did purples, pinks, and golds, you would just hook it like a flower garden. So this is sprinkle wool. This is the easier version, the non-lasagna method. You can do it in your turkey roaster. You can do it in your oven. You can hear that this is snap, crackle, and popping already. We're going to lower it a little bit. And again, you're going to mix an eighth of a teaspoon of dye and two teaspoons of non-iodized salt, and that becomes what you use for your dye. 
and that's what you sprinkle and mix into your ice cube trays. Be sure to mix thoroughly. You see how you can get the heavier portions when you get the little lumps. Use something that disperses the dye a little bit lighter. A round spoon is a little bit heavier. So that makes sprinkle wool. That's your solution. You only do it on one side. If your pan will fit in the oven, you wrap it, you put the oven at 350, and you put it in the oven for 35 minutes. And at the end, you get a fun wool, fun to hook, fun to applique, and you've had a lot of fun in the dye kitchen. Until next month, I hope that you have a great month. Next month, we're going to explore velvet yarns, boucles, and a little bit of the metallic threads and some of the new furs that are out. Also, we'll show some of the boucles that have been hand dyed and possibly some of the yarns that have been hand dyed. So I hope you have a great time. Enjoy yourself in the dye kitchen. And until next time, be well and stay well. Thank you.